It's to almost incomprehensible that they can exist right now. Oh, 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 oh my god, oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Woo! It was like a big rainbow, boom, and it was coming up, boom, boom, and I was like, you, yeah, yeah. Hey, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Honestly, why are you trying to kill me, man? Get ready. Come on, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? They call me. God, I just ran in. Holy cannoli! It's my favorite talk show, Lee! The Overdose Talk Show! I just realized I don't know the date. It is 1 10 2018. Man, time flies. Yeah, no kidding. Ten we, whole days into this year. We hope you enjoyed a little scene from a movie called Private Buckaroo there to start the show <laughs> off. 1942. Shemp's in this one, we saw. He sure is. I don't know his real name. Who gives a shit, right? Uh, Shemp. Uh, That's sitting, not his uh, real name. Sitting here with, uh, with my old pals, Andrea. Hello. And David Box. Hi. David Box, what's it all about? Uh, I don't know. The meaning of life. Go. It's uh, 42. No, 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 no. Come on, seriously. Meaning of life. Meaning of life yeah. uh, to destroy. Okay. We're, we're agents of entropy, and we're just supposed to eat the earth until it's nothing. You're not the first person I've met who thought that way. I think we're supposed to help dogs. The generation of nihilism is what I call you. <laughs> is that? People. Am I a nihilist if I think yeah. that? <laughs> the generation of three years younger than me. Yeah. They're all, or four, what? or five even. Ooh. Shit. Isn't entropy just like a law of nature, though? Yeah, sure. Physics, I think, technically. Um, the physics of nature, more specifically. Yes. We're scientists. Yeah, science works. This conversation is smart. <clears throat> um, yeah. I like us. You guys, uh, you guys worried about the people in Oregon? I'm really afraid about how many fires they're going to start. What is with... I? Am I the only one that had no idea this was going on? That it was illegal to pump your own gas in Oregon? I had no idea. I didn't know. I do think... It seems very dated. Yeah, um, and it, and it just seems strange to me. I don't know why. I don't know why that I was really surprised about this. And then recently, uh, they repealed the law or passed a new law or whatever that made it okay to pump your own gas in cities of less than forty thousand people. Right. Except that it's not okay. Uh, I guess not with some people. Yeah, I don't even know well, how this article says. Man, more <laughs> guy is panic about news, but. Most of these people have to have been to another state at some point. At some point, you would think, but maybe they never pumped their own gas. Possibly. Who knows? I've never been to a full service station in my entire life. Oh no, I don't They're think so. They're kind of goofy. Maybe I don't remember. I don't. I don't remember ever having gone to one. I ended up at one by mistake in very, very, very southern Illinois, um, and we tipped the guy. And I guess you're not supposed to do that. But I was just like, ah, a service. Yeah. <laughs> You would see that would seem like a thing that you would tip for. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess not, huh? We were no, on vacation it's... that one time, and a girl knocked on the window while I was like fumbling with my wallet, and oh, I rolled yeah, the I window down that. like, uh, yeah, and she <laughs> asked what kind we wanted, and I was kind of just like, I'll do it, I'll just do it, and then she she went she went back and hung out with like a big group of her friends just hanging out there. Yeah, remember like that? She, she didn't even remember work where that there, was. Maybe yeah. She yeah. just likes pumping gas. Yeah. It was really weird. Um, yeah, no, I I don't know, man. It just seems it just seems fucking weird to me. I it whatever. Let's uh let's watch how the local news is is treating this up there in Oregon. Um, what is happening? Play. There we go. What can I get for you? With each new year, it always seems we get a few new laws. So take a deep breath, drivers. One of those new laws may just affect your next trip to top off. I think there's going to be a bit of a struggle for a while. Why? Dakota Browning has been refueling drivers for the last four it's years. I like how it's not complicated. Hood I've seen a lot of people doing the like, yeah, dumb liberals don't know how to pump their gas. These trendy. It's like this pretty much only affects people in the country. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> this is probably the only conservatives in the state. Um, <laughs> Small towns and uh, and wherever you know, yeah. I guess forty thousand. That's where the organic farmers are, though, bro. That's you true. Know, the weed uh, I don't know. All that. Are the rural people in Oregon liberals too? 
Uh, I don't don't know. know. They might be. Under 40,000, you're rural most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Rural up there might be very different than rural down here. It could be. Yeah, I mean down uh, down here. I feel like yeah. ninety percent of the towns in Illinois probably have less than forty thousand people. Yeah, you know? I'd I'd probably agree with that. Yeah, you drive around Illinois, it's like population six hundred and fifty. Yeah. A lot of places, <laughs> like what the fuck, dude? Like why even bother? I was watching Forensic Files earlier, and there was a thing in um, Oakwood, Illinois. So I looked it up, and it's it's the whole town is like you know a thing like this, and then like three streets. That go through it in like <laughs> 25 houses. I'm like, why is this a fucking place? Why, why did you bother? Um, all right, let's go back to this. Sorry. Now, for those of you living in counties where the population is less than 40,000, you can do this too from 6 in the evening until 6 in the morning. I think Oregonians are just going to have to get used to it eventually. And it's not even during the day. Why are they rep- interviewing this guy too? Yeah. <laughs> some moron that works at a gas station. expert in his field. Yeah, um, I think people are going to have some trouble with okay, it. Okay, so that said, it's only between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. So basically they're saying overnight you'll have to pump your own gas. If yeah. you go before 6 p.m., someone will still do it for you. Oh. Those SJWs are freaking the fuck out, yeah. dude. <laughs> All those farmer SJ, SJWs, you know. I've seen some people those... on the internet be like, "What about I'm disabled? I'm not going to get out of my car and pump my own gas." So go to a full service station. Yeah, that's not. They're not disallowing full service stations, right? Yeah, I know. People just do like. I'm a young lady. I'm not going to get out of my car at night to pump my own gas. Oh, okay. So just have a strange man approach you uh-huh. in a uh-huh. in a trusting situation. Oh, but there is Hold on, sorry. At some <laughs> Let me get through this. Staff those pumps between those hours. I think if I'm in like a hurry, <laughs> yeah. I'll probably just do it myself. The screen makes it pretty easy. You just follow those directions, and I think that this is real. Okay. That's crazy. I'll try to put here. This new law applies to just about <laughs> all of Eastern Oregon. <laughs> Oh, as God. well as some of you out west. Hood River, that sounds like a nice neighborhood. <laughs> See, it's I grew River. up in born and raised in Washington. Yeah, I, I think it. it's silly that we can't pump our gas yeah. and or couldn't before. And some of you out there just don't know <laughs> yeah. how to do it. You said it, buddy. Because I've never done it before. Others getting their practice in right away. She like didn't in even Hood open River. her window Cole all the Miller, way for the news Point people. News. Yeah, fucking sure. weird. <laughs> um yeah, you sent me some video uh, about people back in 2011 this trying to pump their gas for the first time. Um, I don't know. Do we need audio for this, or should we I, just watch them I don't struggle with the it? The music it's is terrible, weird. but the guys do have some really fucking retarded conversations. Yeah. <laughs> what are you confused yeah, about? Did you lift the little thing? Uh, well, that could be confusing. When I've I've been stoned before and not been able to figure out why my gas wouldn't pump for like five minutes, and I've done it a million times. Yeah. Because so that's not even common anymore. That thing that you have to lift up once yeah. in a while, you do run into that. You're like, what the fuck is going on? You go back in the place. They're like, lift the foot. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, and they try a number of times to press where it has the grade that looks like a button but it's not a button it's just shaped like a button and you think you should be able to press it i tried to pump my gas once at this old ass place in tennessee and i guess there's like a switch on the side at at this certain type of old pump and i had no idea what the fuck to do i was i was like how do you do it they're like yeah you push down the thing and hold the switch like that and i'm like <laughs> and that turns out the old thing that spins around oh that, my God. You know, and then the a numbers. wizard's going to appear and, <laughs> yeah. you, and you'll have to answer a couple riddles yeah and uh <laughs> it had the fucking yeah the spinning dials I'm like this is and i don't trust that at all yeah like, how the fuck is that no, accurate no, no, no. um but yeah anyways whatever i think we've yeah. given this enough Consideration this Oregon gas um, thing, yeah? Yeah, at one point it tells them they try to use a credit card and can't figure out how to make that work. There he is trying to press Just the button, it. which isn't a button. They find the sticker that says first pay cashier, then <laughs> pump gas, and then they continue to try to pump the gas without paying the cashier. Um, it tells them at one point to select the grade, so they go to the keypad and type 87. They're like, oh, we have to tell it what grade we want because they can't. Press the button. So See, they at type a certain point, just like, in. have you never used any technology right. before? <laughs> you know, like. But they, you know, and they you have literally never paid attention to anyone pumping gas ever in your entire life. Wow, <laughs> I never knew that in Oregon, this is like operating a steam engine. This right. is like, yeah. or, you know, a fucking. You need special training. Yeah, it's, it's just like this very specialized knowledge, I guess. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right, moving on to my favorite oh, thing. Good, well, good luck to them. 
to uh, yeah, th- one of my favorite things that's ever happened in the history of the fucking world. A top climate change expert defrauded the EPA out of nine hundred thousand dollars by claiming he was an undercover CIA agent and spent two hundred sixty thousand traveling first class so he didn't have to show up for work. This guy's name is John C. Beal. High profile uh, policy advisor uh, at the Environmental Protection Agency reported directly to Administrator Gina McCarthy doing this for 13 years <laughs> and he got sentenced to prison. Right. Yeah. Probably uh, probably 32 one, months, I think. Yeah. Probably yeah. probably one of those, uh, you know, fancy like Colorado prisons yeah. that has like, a golf prison. course. In yeah. It. The fuck did they get away with that money? Um, <laughs> He's got all this money. Yes. Yeah, but he was working two jobs. He was the agency's highest paid employee and reported directly to... <laughs> so he was just saying, I'm in the CIA and working in Pakistan is what he was saying. Yeah. yeah. Office for, he left the office for weeks or months claiming he was at the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia or in Pakistan working on covert missions. And he was just like, don't ask anybody. They'll get pissed off. Like, yeah. you don't want to fuck with the CIA. That's, but also that's awesome. somehow you have to keep paying me my $200,000 a year salary. Plus, I can't believe I never thought of trying this when I was late for work, when I was a cook and shit. You know? yeah. It's like, dude, listen, I didn't want to have to fucking tell you this, but I, I work for the NSA. Uh, I work for immigration. Yeah, is, is more likely in a kitchen. Yeah, don't tell ever literally every other person that works here. Yeah. Um, really, he was home reading, riding his bicycle, or doing housework. Sometimes he escaped to his vacation home on Cape Cod. Uh, yeah, thirty-two he, months he got. Well, and he talked about being like addicted to telling people that he was in the CIA. He, he described lying as giving him a rush, and I'm like, I'm wondering if you're. Trying to pretend like you're actually in the CIA, should you be talking about it all the time? Is that really how you think you're not going to get caught? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the rush that you would get the first time you say that, though, when someone goes, oh, oh I don't yeah. Like that. Oh, my God. I just I just believe like, you. Oh, my fucking God. This is gold. <laughs> he even lied and said he had con- uh, contracted malaria while serving in the Vietnam War in order to get a handicapped parking spot. <laughs> this guy. This guy just lacks scruples, if you ask me. Yeah. You know, he's he's just not a very principled man, in my opinion. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. EPA Assistant Inspector General Patrick Sullivan told NBC that Beale perpetrated a crime of massive proportions. Oh, my God. I don't know. You know, it, it, it is bad. And, you know, people people get a lot longer than 32 months for, like, stealing a hundred dollars in a in a robbery. You know yeah. what I mean? And and this guy's over a million Um it's amazing. Billing taxpayers for private flights constantly, it seems like. It um, also said that there was an 18-month stretch where he never went to the EPA a single time. Didn't even pretend to work there one time for 18 whole He months. was probably afraid to go back at a certain point. <laughs> they kept like, paying him, though. Yeah, I mean, he might, he might have just thought at a certain point, no one expects me to be there if i show up somebody might be like where the fuck have you been you know right. like, oh my god yeah and then i'll I'm have not to tell them i'm in the say, cia yeah. but that's just how arrogant like these people are yeah in the end the it's highest just... paid employee didn't do a lick of work and they kept paying him right Amazing. well hey that's common in a lot of big corporations no, you know wow. what i mean <laughs> uh, ouch <laughs> <laughs> stepping on the little man yeah Sullivan, who investigated Beal, uh, said he believes the culture of the EPA made it ripe for this sort of fraud. Well, yeah, I bet. You mean the culture that most of the entire organization is a fraud? Right. <laughs> um, there's a certain culture here at the EPA where the EPA where the mission is the most important thing. They don't like criminal investigators. They tend to be very trusting and accepting. What? What are we talking about? Oh, they don't uh, think like criminal investigators. Oh, they don't think like... I'm sorry. That yeah. makes a lot more... I was like, ah. Okay. He helped rewrite, <laughs> rewrite the uh, Clean Air Act in 1990, led EPA delegations at climate change conferences in 2000 and 2001, and helped negotiate carbon emissions agreements with India and China. Okay, so he didn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a long time ago, That though. was a long time ago, and look yeah. where China is now. So good job, John C. Beale. What? Is the is there is there an air pollution problem in China? <laughs> <clears throat> um, I've heard rumors. Yeah. He, he was caught... <laughs> Only after McCarthy was appointed, who was appointed EPA administrator in July, discovered that he was still on the payroll in March 2012, nearly six months after his retirement party. So not only did he do that, he just kept getting paid after he retired. 
you know, amazing with how much he got away with the EPA should just let him go and just be like, yeah, we fucked up. Yeah. yeah. We, sh- we should have done something way sooner. They own $872,000 townhouse in Arlington, Virginia. A lot for a townhouse. Oh, whoops. Yeah. My, Seems how like, embarrassing. Oh, dear. Uh, Virginia and a uh, 626,000 vacation home on Cape Cod. $1.5 um, million dollars worth of property. That's fucked for up. For not going to work. Wow. Yeah, but I'm sure they're going to take all that. I'm sure this is pretty much ruins everything. What happens to rich people when stuff like this happens? Do they ha- do they do they kind of you know do they end up just normal? You know, to this family, just <laughs> like because they're not going to be homeless or like us. They're going to be you know they're going to be middle class after this. Maybe leave them probably with a couple worse, hundred grand. And you know. no, I don't know. I mean, he'll have to pay all that money back. Yeah, I know, but. Uh, and if Justin, he's been Justin retired though, since 2012 and doesn't have other money coming in, how is he ever going to pay that back? Well, he could pay more than what he owes in just his real estate. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so I guess they'll be just normal folk almost. <laughs> A couple hundred grand, grand in the bank. That's like normal. That's like not rich Do you rich think they anymore, know how to pump it? their own gas? If you got $200,000 in the bank, I know that's like rich to people like us, but is that rich? That's not rich, rich. That's still middle class, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 Yes. I don't okay. know where the threshold is, but two hundred thousand sure is not. I mean, it's richer. Than, it's rich. Like if I've had that much money, I would feel extremely rich. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would I've lose my fucking four hundred dollars to my name for, for, since yeah. I was seventeen. <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, that's. Uh, I would feel very rich. Anyways, yeah. Uh, fucking, uh, really, something to aspire to, if you're somebody that wants to, you know, get over on the system. This is fucking hilarious. This is, I mean. Don't get arrested. But. No, don't get arrested. Get away with it. That's yeah. what you need, need to do. It seems. Get away with it. it. Well, it's said. I mean, if he would have just cut it at his retirement, he wouldn't have got caught. Never would have noticed. It's yeah. unbelievable. Um, How do I, I mean. Uh, why is Charlie Daniels yelling at Taco Bell, by the way? Did you have some? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you have something else to say? No, about I was but, just getting mad because I want people to give me money for doing nothing and it never happens. Are you sure? So we can. You are a bartender. That's true. You pour it sometimes. Sometimes you do next to nothing and get lots of money when you're a bartender. It's yeah, not bad. That's true. Um, but also, I do lots of things and I don't get well, money, so it evens yeah, out. So I know. I'm just saying. Um. Anyway, I was just getting mad. We don't have to linger on that. I do. <laughs> Calm down. I like to see Taco Bell get engaged in a feud, though, because what is what is Charlie Daniels mad about here? Um, I don't think he's mad. I think he's he's just I think warning he's nervous. Him. This said uh, he's, he's ah, scared he's of cautious. what Taco Bell this is doing. This is happening all the time. He uh, issued. I saw. I just saw the headline. Charlie Daniels issues grim warning to Taco Bell about the Illuminati. Like <laughs> we better check this out. And he's basically saying, I guess they have a new line of commercials that makes a, like some Illuminati joke. And he's like, this is a serious topic. You know, not a frivolous subject. He says right there. Um, oh, come on Who, now. Who's Charlie Daniels? He looks like a prospector. He did the devil went he's down a- to Georgia. He's a, he's a famed, oh, yeah. uh, you know, bluegrass country musician he does he looks know. like the guy from toy story though he looks like the prospector you guys go ahead hold on what um the, okay whoa okay <laughs> I'm on the, show. I, uh, <laughs> the bell the bell luminati <laughs> this is impossible yeah taco bell uh doesn't car won't start really oh, oh Jesus. boy all right one time I was right, tripping we'll on mushrooms and, and I saw a taco bell back. commercial and I was I overwhelmed go with the I feeling <laughs> That they were bye engaging bye. in mind control and and other things like that, and you know, targeting it the could masses. Be. Taco Bell is weird. Um, they have been gradually switching all of their about? ingredients over to higher quality stuff, um, and they are using like a much higher quality beef. It's actually grass fed beef. Who they cares? They, they poisoned to... people for long enough. They're... Totally. But here's what's weird: they're is that they made me. this switch, but they're not advertising it. They're just letting the better food bring people in and bring people back. They're like people who are interested in where our food comes from will find out, and people who don't care don't want to hear about it. So we're not going to like advertise that we. Have grass fed beef now. Plus, we're some just pe- going to serve grass fed beef. Some people get mad when you try to give them healthier food. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. There's a weird type of person out there that just goes like, nah, I don't want, I don't need that organic <laughs> no. crap. I've been, after all, I've had a, a Taco Bell burrito before and I didn't immediately die. So, what yeah. the fuck are you all talking about? <laughs> yeah. I'm still alive. Mm, I love um, the taste of this Taco Bell poison. They probably would <laughs> lose a lot of customers to people who would be like, oh, nothing's going to taste the same now. Yeah. Oh, Taco Bell is hipster crap. Right. Yeah. 
but really uh, stuff just or tastes it's going to be too expensive now you yeah. know that that kind of thing that just freaks people out also not true do you want to watch uh, buys you an obscene amount of taco bell do you want to watch the commercial that uh, charlie daniels is mad about yes okay let's is check it, this is out it so scary am i going to be scared it's i don't know i haven't seen it we'll check it out ah! oh, oh, they're in our house between the dollar and taco bell do you see that because TV. it unlocks a world of 20 decadent <laughs> menu items from breakfast to late night for just a dollar. You know what I would point out, though, to you? I don't know if you ever noticed this. Let me scroll back here where you can see. If the, I uh, ever noticed it, I'm watching it for the first time. See the Taco Bell logo? Uh-huh. It's an eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, They've got a triple, oh my God. A triple six uh, <laughs> thing that's like on their wallpaper or something and... Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah, I remember like the, <laughs> there's some standardization in their branding, since you know that where they use three sixes, kind of like uh, on top of uh, Damien's head in the Omen. Oh like, my God! Yeah. Whoa. The yeah. Yeah. All right, hold on. Just a dollar each. <laughs> Twenty items for a dollar. Twenty steps on the pyramid. Is all this stuff really on a dollar really bill? Behind this. Is this real? Is it the Illuminati or the Bell Illuminati? Experience the power. <laughs> they look happy at least. The Does the Bell Illuminati also <laughs> kidnap and rape children? Now, <laughs> I think that, uh, first of all, probably. Yeah. Uh, second of all, it's funny because it is funny that, that Charlie McDan or <laughs> Charlie McDan, that uh, Charlie Daniels is doing this. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's, it is it is kind of funny, but I kind of agree with him that I've noticed this a lot over the past 10 years. That mainstream culture has started mimicking Illuminati stuff just to sort of like to normalize it as a joke. So anytime you talk about it, people are like, oh, the Illuminati. Whereas like 15 years ago, they didn't know the word. Right. You know? yeah. And so I don't know. Same I do thing they of did a, to UFOs, right? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, inter- they. interracial marriage. Yeah, you know? there we go. How I feel about that. Um. Yeah, the uh, but it might be um, I don't know. It, it it might be a point that I agree with. I think that he has, but still, this is just the stupidest commercial I've ever seen. It's, yeah, it's goofy as Maybe fuck. The dumbest that I've ever seen. I, t- I don't think anyone needs to be done with that. Concerned now? Are we concerned that um the Taco Bell people are trying to tell us something and they're gonna start controlling us soon? Should we be at all concerned that this is a message to us that they are the Illuminati? I uh, vote with my dollar, so uh, you know if it were up to me, they wouldn't be nothing. They wouldn't be uh, illumin nothing. Taco Bell is literally the only fast food I'm ever willing to eat. Ugh, God, it's fucking disgusting. I know it, dude. I know it. I can't help shit. it. I know it's, it's grass. Bad. It's grass fed. There's twenty four, but it's better uh, now. There's twenty four hour restaurants around here. Yeah, no, not with drive throughs. Okay. <laughs> Hey, that's I'm, what, dude. You lazy ass. I know. When I'm, I'm sorry. Su- when I work for 11 <laughs> hours without a break and without eating anything, I don't want to fucking get out of my car and that, wait for food. Admittedly, that was my biggest challenge when I quit eating fast food. That was the worst part about it. Yeah. I was like, "Fuck! I have to get out of the car and talk to a person inside." Like, right. this sucks, dick. And then um, Grubhub but, became a thing, and I don't know. Yeah. You get, barely you get, have to do anything. You get used to it quick. You know why? Because you have so much more energy because you don't eat fast food. I know. Well, I very oh, rarely mm-hmm. eat fast food ever. If I, I know. do, it's Taco Bell, though. It's a moot point. Yeah. Um, so, real quick, uh, I forgot to mention, in the history of zany laws in oh, Oregon, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the black laws of Oregon, I guess 1944 to 1957, uh, exclusion laws, they were also called and were passed in several other states, I think including Illinois, right? Indiana, Illinois at one point. Yes. Yeah. Um, which I think... Uh, most of the time didn't uh, expel black people who, who were living there already, but was a law against new uh, black new settlers. settlers, settlers yeah. yeah, I think they could buy property and stuff. Maybe. I don't know. I might right, be wrong But they didn't that. want a whole community of them banding together right. without white people to dilute them. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, hey, that was the strategy of the day. Um, it was called integration. Wink, wink. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, the, just wacky laws in Oregon's history. But apparently one of the most racist states out there. Um, I saw 
a lot of people talking about it in this one comment section that were like, yeah, people pretend Oregon is, is like a real liberal, inclusive place, but I grew up there and it's one of the most racist places in the whole fucking country. It's just built on a history of black exclusion and blah, blah, blah. I don't know how dramatic of a thing that is to say, but you know, yeah. a lot of people apparently feel that way. So I looked this up because I saw a couple of people mention it. Um, anyways, yeah. Another That's wacky great. law. <laughs> There's a, uh, a quote that I liked so much when we were reading about this earlier. Uh, Peter Burnett says in his defense of the exclusion laws, the object is to keep clear of this most troublesome class of population. This Which, most uh, troublesome. <laughs> yeah. Referring to white people, uh, For, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Right. <laughs> Apparently they had no problem with Chinamen. A lot of Chinamen up in Oregon, weren't there? (laughs) What? That's not the worst thing you could call them. Come on. That's where they ended. (laughs) That's where they um, finished the railroad and they all just stayed. Oh, that's what happened? (laughs) Sure. Because then they started Shanghaiing. They started, remember, they were always Shanghaiing people (laughs) in, um, you know, remember this? I don't even know what that means. Oh, okay. What does that mean? Uh, you know what? We ha- uh, we do have to take an early break here because apparently Darcy is stuck and the car won't uh, start. Oh. So I got to figure out what's going on with that. And uh, then we can talk about shanghai I can't believe you didn't know about that. The uh, shanghai capital of the, of the whole thing was Portland, Oregon. They used to have stools in bars with like trap doors that would fucking drop people into a... Uh, into a secret, you know, dungeon downstairs, and then it only gets worse from there. Oh my we'll God. be back in just a moment on the Overdose Talk Show. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, <laughs> I hit the wrong. <laughs> we'll use it. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Back in a minute. Man, dig that crazy horn there. Ooh. Another scene from Private Buckaroo. I don't know what we're doing with this. <laughs> the, the classic. I just never heard of it. The name is so fucking great. <laughs> Private Buckaroo. The Andrews sisters are in this. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Um, back on the Overdose Talk Show, the car got started. Great. We uh, didn't go anywhere. Getting back to Shanghai. I, I, we didn't prepare a segment on this, but just since you guys didn't know. You know, there were bars in Portland, and a lot of this is sort of debatable. I guess it did happen a little. It's debatable how much it happened. There were bars with little tricks and trapdoors set up to abduct people and basically sell them as, like, work slaves onto ships, most of which ended up in Shanghai, I suppose, and they ended up calling it being Shanghai'd. When, what era was this? I think we're talking 1800s to early 1900s. Um, All right. Yeah. That's pretty spooky. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's tunnels all over. There's tunnels... Every downtown area of every city, but it's, it's surprising like, uh, even how like smaller cities have a tunnel system too. There's right under us right now. I've been in them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never been in them around here. Oh yeah, man. I used to live in an apartment building like two or three blocks from here. Um, that we one time, I don't know, we we sort of kicked down a door because uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a uh, this really mysterious door and it drove us fucking nuts. And we couldn't deal with it. And we tried, we tried like, you know, doing it peaceably. We tried like taking the hinges. Everything was all old and stuff. And there was this really old lock on it. I'm like, you know what? This would be so easy to just break through because it was in an old like sub basement in a I hallway. This door. And we used to party in the basement. I don't know while we did laundry, drink and stuff. And we just always were looking at this fucking door. And finally, me and my friend decided to just bust through it. And it led us into this fucking. We went on an awesome adventure. Tunnels all over the fucking place here. Um, and some of them even led to these old abandoned apartments that we got into that Ew. hadn't been lived in. I think the newspapers were like from the sixties, um, that were let, that we found. They Who were knows? underground. Yeah. They're, and, and the windows in these apartments are on main street. You can see out of them, but they're layered with so much fucking dust. You can kind of see out of them. And, um, yeah, if you'll notice, uh, there's, there's, a, I think the building actually might be gone now, but there was, um, there was these underground apartments with just windows up on the top that you could see like knee level into the street sort of um, weird yeah and you would have never noticed them walking by but uh yeah we found all kinds of shit that was actually the time i just dumb luck stepped right over there was a fucking big like sub pump hole sump pump hole or whatever it is and uh it's just an open hole full of fucking like old sludge and water who knows how deep and we walked into a pitch black room and I, I just fucking walked all confidently to the right <laughs> and then somebody turned on a, a lighter, a lighter or whatever, 
And I realized I had just stepped over just the like corner of this thing. I could have it. just walked right to fucking oh, anyway. Anyways, um, tunnels all over. So that's what supposedly happened in these tunnels under Portland is they were used for human trafficking, some of them. Um, um, probably actually coal, though. <laughs> yeah, it could be a lot of things. Our The middle school that we went to in Downers Grove had a bomb shelter tunnel system underneath the school. It was like a tunnel network. Mm-hmm. Um, I bet in the 70s and 80s, people kids got to party in there they closed everything i don't know off. you know i found out about it and uh somebody told me one of the staff members told me that the u.s history teacher had a door to it under his desk and i asked to see it one time and the teacher got really weird about it and wouldn't let me see it like a trap door under yeah, the desk it was like a door in the floor with stairs that went down to a tunnel like, and I was like, anytime like, if, you if we could put you, something together where I could just look at it, I'm super curious about it. If you don't shut weird. up, you're going to get very intimate with this tractor yeah. and tunnel. <laughs> and even to this day, it seems so weird. Like, what were you, what did you have under that trap door that you couldn't be moved? If I was a teacher, I would have alcohol under there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> just like, one oh, big God. marijuana. I picture all our teachers growing up just like, fucking. how would you not be losing your mind? I don't understand who like, chooses to be a teacher. Oh my god At a school like I have to say the same things Over and over all day To people who hate me (laughs) Like fuck (laughs) Try and make them care I need a drink Um, Let's do uh, Let's roll through some stuff All right. All right. We gotta move quick Scientists can now control Mice with radio waves And light You tell us about this They have LED lights In their legs These mice Um, I guess it's kind of An old article right But we never talked about it Yeah it's about a year old Yeah Okay So uh, they're basically Causing mice to alter Their physical movements by what uh sending radio signals basically to the light to the light which triggers let's see it's triggered a uh, photosensitive neurons and changed how the mouse moved yeah um so kind of okay. creepy it sounds like they're just hurting the mouse and making it who's, run in circles yeah, yeah. pretty much who's funding like, this research like, yeah why do we need this Probably, oh god i can't see uh, a whole lot of noble motivations right. for, for going into this um we've talked a lot before i mean unless it's they think it'll be some kind of nerve therapy that might restore, um, like, bodily oh, function yeah. in people who are paralyzed. Okay. You know, if no, you can I'm stimulate sure the couple. nerve from an external stimulus, sure. then... I'm sure there's a few reasons like that. And but then that's not th- what it'll be used for. Thousands of people trying to take over the world reasons. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, They'll test it by using it in torture situations first. It'll be a weapon really to make it. Is this building it'll make your enemy fall a soldier over? for you? It's, Did you guys hear that? It's terrifying. Yeah. Well, it's very old and it's very windy it's really outside. really fucking windy out there. Yeah. That fucking Tyvek paper. The Tyvek is making a ruckus. Talked about. It's yeah. just. <laughs> We just call him Tyvek now. He's his own thing. Yeah. The, the building he has, <laughs> is named him. Tyvek. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, dude. It's freaking annoying. Uh, and and this building is old, and I think it might fall down. The, your door sure. is shut, but it keeps slamming right. because there's a literal breeze coming through this room. Right yeah. Now. Well. Yeah. So somehow. Somehow. The re- <laughs> this, this research uh, comes from IEEE Spectrum. <laughs> In the story, A New Kind of Wireless Mouse... Ada uh. Poon. <laughs> Ada Poon. <laughs> isn't isn't that Gross. isn't that who who wrote my face smells like fish? <laughs> I think she wrote that. Ada Poon, <laughs> an associate professor of electrical engineering at Stanford University, wrote up the results of the study and the new minimally obtrusive way to direct the small lab mammals. Previous experiments have controlled mice wirelessly, but the implements they used meant large batteries attached to the mice. Yeah, that's not, not yeah, that's never that impressive. We're yeah. Like, Look at this new thing. That's just like a fucking a mouse hooked up to a car battery twitching. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is good, right? We figured this <laughs> out. Yeah, just fucking, every time, man, just twitches all over the place. We did it. Um, before Poon's team could make the mouse walk in circles, they first had to make sure the neurons in the mouse responded to light. Right spoon. Stop saying it. The trick comes. You're saying it. They weird. know. They know how funny it is. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. The trick comes from the unicellular green algae. Algae that uh, can swim towards a light source thanks to a special type of protein on its cellular membrane. The protein responds to light by opening an ion channel in the membrane, thus changing the electrical potential within uh, the algae cell and triggering the movement into two whip-like flagella. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I totally understand this. (laughs) Around 2005, (laughs) several research groups realized they could take the gene that codes for this protein and insert it into the DNA of a neuron. Of course, of course. And stick it right in there. 
as though I'm I'm yeah. uh, I'm I'm telling you guys anything you don't know, you know. Yeah. Anyway, since that is uh, something that we're all pretty much uh, terrified of. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> terrified of and uh, and and having a, a very thorough understanding of yeah. as well. Um, let's segment uh, over. Let's look at this because I heard that old Trump Jr. Uh, suggests Ellen DeGeneres is running a shadow government. Um, um. Yeah, Donald Trump's son suggests Ellen DeGeneres is running a shadow government. So I can't uh, think of one way to disagree with that. What about a little, a little video on the subject here? All right. Let's see. I mean, I don't need... Loading ad? Yeah, damn it. Do I need ad block? Does that work? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've never used ad. This block. video it's is not oh, very ethical, Vinny. I no mean, commercial. people make their ads, uh, their money on ads. Listen to this. Eric Trump <laughs> tweeted a bizarre conspiracy theory about Ellen DeGeneres. How is this, by the way, bizarre to claim that like people in the media are are in on the 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 secret no, oligarchy? Nobody um, is working together, though. That's I know. the difference. That's that what would, the conspiracy that is, would be that a conspiracy people are theory. working together to do something like that, sure. which they never would do. They'd all be doing it completely separately. And they would all have their own mental diagnoses mm-hmm. when the time came. Why does this keep happening? What the fuck is going on here? Um, yeah, so he's saying Ellen DeGeneres is in on the deception, as it were. Oh, I guess deception, we're starting over. Yeah, it's not all right, let's open. just watch this whole thing through because it's behaving very poorly. Okay. <laughs> Boo. Our theory about Ellen DeGeneres claiming that the left-leaning comedian must be part of the deep state. Um, apparently, you know, that's only a right-wing thing. Um, it says that coming up here on his Twitter account. He uh, popped up his whatever. The deep state is a conspiracy often touted by the far right. And right. <laughs> popularized by Steve Bannon during the 2016 who, presidential campaign. Who we like now, I guess. I guess. Yeah. It is an alleged secret group of liberals working within the government bureaucracy to delegitimize the Donald Trump administration. That's not a secret. <laughs> that's that's no, 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 that's no, no, what they no, do no, to no, each other, secret, isn't it? It's a secret. It's a secret. Well, because actual no. deep state exists in countries like Turkey, Egypt, and Pakistan. Over there, yeah. There's no evidence of a deep state in the United States. No, no, no. There's no evidence. Ignore the, the things we just said did. in this video. What? Ignore the things that were just said in this video. And okay, these are great. Deep state means these recommendations. Blah blah blah. I follow certain people on Twitter. Hold on. Officially at the clown stage of this. My, the last one is my favorite, if I remember correctly. Uh, not this one. No. It's over. Eric Eric caught us. Um, part of this, but I paid twenty dollars to sit with Eric Trump for ten minutes and have him explain. Okay, that person is offering one of the richest people in the world twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and what kind of statement is that? Why was that one of the ones they showed? I'd pay 20 bucks to meet with a huge the pre- I'd pay 20 dollars to meet with the the president's son and hear for an him hour talk about what he <laughs> believes in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are so dumb. But um, I'll, I'll make that sacrifice. But is that supposed to be like an impactful statement? Yeah. You guys like, you That's know, the best they could find on the whole internet. Look, I'm not saying I would seek him out if I was walking past and all it cost was $20 for one hour of hearing him talk about Ellen DeGeneres, then I'd do it. Yeah. You, know? you think he could even put an hour together on I'm, Ellen? I'm not going out of my way, but I like that. There's no evidence of any collusion no. <laughs> in the history of the United States. You know, <laughs> No evidence of anything resembling a deep state. And even stuff like... Um, Late night shows we've done. We've played compilations on the show before of uh, I can think of a specific one when Conan O'Brien was going to perform a gay marriage on stage and there was a compilation of people on TV talking about it. And it was like 25 people all saying late night host Conan O'Brien will be pushing the envelope on live TV. Oh, that's right. It was like an insane amount of people using that phrase. Exactly that Push, phrase. Pushing the envelope. He's pushing He'll be the envelope. pushing the envelope. He'll be pushing the envelope. Oh, okay. He'll be pushing the envelope. He'll be pushing the envelope. Yeah, it, there's a million examples. <laughs> you're talking about when it seems as though uh, a certain term. A script was written yeah, for or to, or to a certain term it. or phrase is is a big part of like the brainwashing that's going on or right. something. Right, and um, I mean, if you expand on that, you can see 
how all of those things might be connected. Yeah, to well, each remember other. Uh, remember that documentary about the Kennedy assassination, and they showed uh, all the news coverage from the time. Everybody said they used slumped in the same way. The president then slumped. Yeah, and I don't know. That wouldn't have been the first word that came to my mind in that situation. I would have mm-hmm. said the the you know the president fucking exploded all yeah. over the back of the car <laughs> like. Slumping wasn't really what happened. What was left of um, his torso fell over. A bullet hit him from behind, and his brain flew back towards the bullet. That's what yeah. happens. Well, you that's know? yeah. Um, that's for. Uh, I mean, some, watch an episode of Forensic Files. Why don't you? Yeah. Tell me that's not how it works. Did a key player and part of the investigation maybe use that word? And that's like them just trying to. Well, the guy that was be good. Uh, what's something. his name that was in the front seat said it first. I think. Oh. Um, yeah. And he wasn't even looking, I don't think, if you look at the Zapruder film. Anyways, another you can topic even believe entirely. that's real. Um, I mean, this guy. There were no bullets. Uh, Andrea, where's Clay County? Because in Clay County, uh, the sheriff's department just used a small army of troops and MAR. Sorry, M A R P R A P. What do I fucking have dyslexia here? They bust some kids with a little weed and they're bragging about it on the video. Um,. Oh, Florida. Sorry. Okay. The Clay County Sheriff's Department is receiving heavy black backlash on a, <laughs> almost had a Freudian backlash <laughs> and, uh, on social media this week after making a video of a SWAT raid. So yeah, basically whatever. They raid this uh, <clears throat> this small weed operation in the suburbs and uh, find 15 people in the house hanging out. Uh, they bring AR-15s. They had those giant fucking tank vehicles and all, yeah. all the military shit going on. And uh, then then this sheriff decides to make a real cocky, you know, sort of Wyatt Earp sort of statement here. Um, I'm sure he earned his right to say whatever he's going to say. Check out this video. I love this guy. They got all these kids on the curb up here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> the kids are just sitting there joking around. <laughs> and they're gonna come up. Look at the uh, fucking. How look many at this, of them dude. there are? Oh look my god! This. Oh my god! Look! Are you out of your goddamn <laughs> minds? What did like, they what think the... was happening? Dude, exactly. Yeah, this is easily could have. Uh, you know, uh, as we know, a lot of suburban weed dealers are armed with, uh, you know, anti-aircraft. Uh, missiles and and um, uh, I have literally never met a weed dealer who didn't have a bazooka in their hand the right. entire time you were interacting with them. <laughs> Honestly, that's I'd why be... everything takes so long because they only have one hand to do anything because the other hand has the bazooka. The the row of kids they just showed, I would be surprised if there was a fucking slingshot in this house. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, the none of them looked real like hardcore. You know, I don't know. They every a lot of people have guns, but. Whatever, still. This is fucking ridiculous. Here's the sheriff here, this bald guy. The bald guy with glasses. The one with the coat on? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're out here this morning in the Hickory Glen neighborhood. Me and the guys from the SWAT team, narcotics section. We uh, just served a search warrant on a narcotics house. And it was warned and warned house. again. And that's why we call this operation You Were Warned. Because these individuals, all 15 of them that came out of this residence, were warned before that if they kept up, that we'd come back. If they kept up, what? I continue to tell folks, and I'll say it time and time he again. He just gave general don't, warnings don't seem yeah. to believe about what crime. I'm As the sheriff of Clay County. Also, what is, is this like? Telling- <clears throat> this is like an official thing that they're doing for the sheriff's department, and they got somebody to shoot it up and down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well. That's- you know what they always say, you know, cops are known to be very intelligent, yeah. high-functioning people. <laughs> That's, That's true. Uh, they do always say that. Always good at everything and uh, capable of logic in most situations. And by narcotics, he meant weed, right? Just to be clear. I think so. Okay. Yeah. You, if you want to commit crimes in Clay County, you got options. You can stop what you're doing. You can leave Clay County. Those aren't options, though. He said, if you want to commit crimes, you got options. If you want to commit <laughs> crimes in Clay County, you have options. Yeah. Like and you, you could, could do either... breaking and entering. None of the... <laughs> yeah. You could sell drugs. Yeah, you but could then speed. there's a violent crime. But then Lower you would get light. a weapon. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> what he said was uh, that you have options, but neither of the options had anything to do with committing crimes. It was stop committing crimes or. Yeah, if you want to commit you know, crimes in Clay County, County yeah. you got options. You can stop what you're doing. You can leave Clay County, or you too will be on the receiving end of this. Follow. 
Watch. I bet something dramatic is going to happen here, right? You're going to yeah. be on the receiving end of this. I'm tingling Look with the broken fucking window. They probably threw, uh, like, stun uh, things in there. And shit. Well, yeah. and if he had a one search day. warrant, why Wait, did they have on. to enter so violently? You'll be sleeping at night or early one morning, and you'll hear a bang and a lot of noise. And the end result and the outcome will be me standing in your living room, like I said, drinking my morning cup of coffee. Unless is that it's where nighttime. you think the living room is in that house? Ah. That if you just fucking chuck that. Fifteen going to jail. Three big goals. Y'all take care, Clay County. Was it? <laughs> is that how? For every five, I take a gulp. Was he supposed? <laughs> and I'm tired. He thinks he's real fucking <laughs> slick for that too. Yeah. yeah. Three big gulps. I gotta Drink see this. My morning guy. cup of coffee. A morning cup of coffee. And by the way, this coffee is obviously ice luke, cold, lukewarm at best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not too impressed. Fifteen going to jail. He, he just acts like he fucking took a took a triple tequila shot. Right. After yeah. after <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen going to jail. Three big goals. Y'all take care, Clay County. Five fingers, five toes, and sixty-eight IQ points. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Um, and actually, only five were charged. Oh, for only five were yeah. charged. Okay. Yeah. Well, only that's uh, yeah. that's one of the the things I've seen about weed lately. Thank um, God for that sheriff. This was another video. Do we want to do this one? We're very um, lucky. Yeah, we're lucky to have him. We're lucky uh, to have people uh, like Dr. this. Dr. Mark in our Siegel lives. is here. Dr. Siegel, we have ever since Colorado uh, <laughs> passed it on their own, yeah. in, in spite of federal law, Light bread. we've been trying to study uh, what legalizing would do. What are you finding? First finding, of course, Colorado. Talk about them since 2013. Recreational marijuana has been legal. Brian, yes, they've raised about a half a billion dollars doing that with taxes and fees. But which, by Rejoice. the way, yeah, <laughs> thank God for that. The government has more people's money. That's awesome. Woohoo! Here's what the problem: relief. fatal car accidents involving pot has doubled over that period of time. Okay. So that doesn't mean they, that they pot's have the cause, doubled. But they're smarty pants. They what? <laughs> he said. Uh, never mind. <laughs> what did he say? Are you trying to say half doubled? Have doubled when yeah. he sh he should have said have when he said has. Oh, ha oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, boo. Yeah, the uh, uh burn. <laughs> is that? Think that doctor know it all? Do you think? Uh, do you think there's any truth to that, or do you no. think it's causation correlation? Where now maybe there are. I think more it's neither. I think they're testing for it more often well, now. With that. And also, like, maybe the, it, just because there are more people smoking weed doesn't mean that's the cause of the accidents, you know? Right, know. and having weed in your system isn't equivalent to being stoned. There's no way to measure if you're stoned or not. And also, anyone I know who dri drives after they smoke weed is not a worse driver. Yeah, I it's, mean, everyone will tell you that. Yeah, yeah. it's not the, like after you drank. Also, uh, okay, well, whatever. Let's roll through They're this. finding that people that you die in car wrecks when yeah, you're pregnant and you have morning later. sickness, it, can, but that leads the same to, it leads to yeah. children that have behavioral problems. They I can't don't know focus, if that's that true. He's, here. he's talking about pregnant women smoking weed. I've never known anyone who smoked weed when they were pregnant. Uh, maybe maybe our mom. Um, but uh, <laughs> I doubt I it, know. honestly. But no one in, in my lifetime, like people our age that have gotten pregnant, not one single person I've ever known kept no. smoking weed while they were pregnant. And, and as far as I understand, uh, the risks associated with it are very, 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 very minor. Are they? Yeah. Okay. But, but you know, the research on it is fluid. I don't know that a lot of people are willing to just try it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that a lot of people would be smoking <laughs> weed true. while they were pregnant <laughs> and not also consuming alcohol or other drugs because if they can't not smoke weed then they're probably not going to resist other stuff maybe i don't know some I mean, people some people about, only smoke weed and it's really hard to stop you know yeah um but he talks about like low birth weight i just like i have never ever heard that before ever and maybe it's true and maybe it's new stuff or maybe he's just fucking do you think saying you're, stuff i don't know do you think you're addicted to weed uh, no because when i had to stop it wasn't hard at all really yeah it's hard for me I just replaced the activity with something else. But also it when was, I quit actually, smoking cigarettes, I like I'm a good cigarette quitter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been six years yeah. since I've smoked a cigarette. It's pretty good. So I'm a, I'm good at quitting things. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I had, to, from being a failure. <laughs> I had to quit smoking weed for like four months one time and I fucking hated it. it we was quit terrible. for a whole summer like, after we got arrested once. We had to take drug tests and stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. That's what I was in court, you know, uh, rehab where you go where you go two <laughs> nights a week and talk to a retard, you know, yeah. some lady who has this fucking 
certification, you know, like who was a total fucking moron. I hated this lady so much. And she was racist. <laughs> Guess what race she was? She was an African American lady. And she hated and, you. Wait, literally one day there was this other white kid and his name was Alex. He's actually like a, a pretty big DJ around here. Um but uh I didn't I didn't really like his stuff. But he was uh he was the only other white person in this whole program. It was me and him. But we looked like nothing alike, and we also dressed completely differently. He dressed like fucking an electronica DJ guy, EDM guy, you know, and uh, like tight, really tight pants and like a dra- jacket with like 80 straps on it and shit, you know, and just had like a weird like sweep over haircut thing going on. And like, uh-huh. and uh, I would have looked like me. And and one day True she, Midwest blue. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could be on a John Deere commercial. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she she goes one day. She called me Alex and she she just goes, oh, yeah, Finny, I have the hardest time keeping you two, like, uh, keep, <laughs> keeping track of which is which. And I was like, we look nothing alike. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're, Do you is... confuse me with anyone else in this room? Right. Did you ever get me mixed up with, yeah, any of the other people? No. Huh. Is someone then, is someone here with us now? No, here's what the funny part was. She said it. She said that. And I was like, that's racist. And everyone in the room just laughed. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like. I was only half joking. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna push it because I have to be here. But, yeah, uh, remember they talk about them, speaking of forensic files like, again. They talk about that in forensic locking. files because forensic files is from whatever 15, 20 years ago. Most of it. Yeah, and uh, they talk about that in there like. The police didn't believe the identification because they know people cannot identify people of another race. Yeah, it, totally. apparently it was a thing for, or still probably is for law enforcement. They just kind of know that they're like, ah, when I'm dealing with a, you know, white or black guy identifying the other, you know, it's kind it's of gonna be shaky. less accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, even just a regular eye, like even a and. Uh, same race identification can be so tricky too. It's easy so, to get confused and misremember. And I have a hard time with faces in general too. I can't. Me too. I'm terrible with it. Yeah. I, I need I, a I, defining feature or I am in trouble. Right. Yeah. 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 Old white men. They, no. They get blurry for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Old white men with white hair. That's just how cool you are. Huh? We have. Yeah. Um, we it's have gonna be me at the restaurant <laughs> where I work. We have just like a shitload of the same business guy all the time, and you'll get like four or five of the same guy sitting at a table. Yeah, well, there's really only like fucking thirty five people. Well, yeah, like types. <laughs> there's like there's thirty five or forty molds that people kind of come out of. Yeah, I like, would. Oh, take that, one of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I know you. Um. All right, let's finish up. Long term use, and we're talking about you know once a week. We're not talking about somebody that uses it once or twice. Regular use of pot <laughs> definitely. Because he's talking about long term use, like you know, like a serious user, like somebody once a week. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> so one of the relationships. Are- These people also have no clue because you you know you lie. Speaking of like court court appointed uh, rehab, you don't ever tell the truth to those fucking people. You'll be in there for three years oh in, in intensive uh, inpatient <laughs> rehab facilities and shit. Like one time I did tell the truth. This is how I learned this when I was like 16. I didn't realize how they how serious they took weed at those places. They're like, well, how much do you smoke? You know, I'm like, you know, all day, every day, you know, (laughs) they're like, like, well, what do you mean? Like how much? Like, I don't know, like five or ten bowls a day, you know, they're like, oh, my God. (laughs) You have a real, that's like the worst case we've ever heard of. And I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> no, everyone what else did has I do? just been lying. Yeah, and, uh, and they recommended all this crazy, re- oh my God, they wanted me to go it's to It's weird. A- well, and their definitions of stuff uh, are so weird. I had a friend who had to go through a psychological evaluation mm-hmm. um, before he faced trial for something. I don't know. But based solely because he was honest about the amount of acid he had consumed in his life. Oh, based, no, no, no. no based no, no, no. only <laughs> on that information. Never. Well, he they tricked him because would, they were like, this is a doctor, that, it's actually. confidential, they won't know, no one will know, they'll just like reflect with a score, whatever. But based on that, the doctor had to uh, say that his perception of reality was different than that of an average human being and therefore he was classified in a spectrum of insane good thing we've never done acid <laughs> yeah no kidding Jesus christ man yeah um that is that is a thing you heard your whole life uh and i think in various uh you know 
I don't know, whatever institutions and wherever over the years they have considered above certain amount of hits, you're fucking legally insane in right. certain places. Yeah. And There's stuff. a number. Yeah. 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 I mean, when we were Which kids, we have would, never come close. They to would that. always say like, seven. No, no. Yeah, no. Seven in one lifetime. Well, I think it's <laughs> I think it's seven. But if you do a hundred times that amount, you come back through the window of right, reality yeah. and you're sane again. <laughs> The doors of perception, you know what I'm saying? Just transform into some light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not even actually here right now. Yeah. <laughs> have we seen you. that? You've seen that I in your see it all the, I what see it all the time. This guy? I see it in the office all the time. I think we all have. We the, all have someone in mind that, gosh, there were a lot of people in my high school I thought were so smart, and they would do that and then go down the wrong path. And of course yeah. they use it with other things, yeah, like alcohol. There's a huge oh, increase of alcohol <laughs> use among people that are also using pot. Right, and but you talk about that being a gateway drug, and you also talk about... So there's always these things, these guys like, I don't really give a fuck if there are adverse health uh, effects to smoking pot. Justify why you should be advocating the use of force to stop it. Right. You know what I mean? Because apparently no, nobody, you know, nobody cares. And so there's so many worse health choices out there that are legal, whatever. We talk about it a million times. Opioids. Anything. Just there's so many Cigarette, things. There's a hundred. Yeah, there's a hundred things. So so justify the use of force in stopping something that's relatively, you know, harmless in most in most cases. You know? Even that point about it is moot, though, because justify using force. Well, all. for a personal could, choice at all. Right. You could yeah. view it, though, like, could you justify the use of force against somebody who's drinking and driving? And uh, I know. how close is this to that? I feel like there is kind Not of argument. Not at all. Well, <laughs> no, I know we know that. Far? But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Light years. Well, and, but you know. But that's, that's the argument that they're they're making though mm. this gateway drug thing is one of the most upsetting things to me because it, it's not true and if you factor uh, of illegal drugs maybe you could make that argument but if you factor alcohol into like what order people use things in and what leads to what sure alcohol is 100 percent would be the most gateway. people tried alcohol before we did yeah. absolutely yeah. or yeah. they used alcohol enough that they felt like they needed a new drug you think so yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. It's never happened. I have I literally remember what it was for me. Never done cocaine or heroin ever. Never even tried it. Wasn't interested. Uh, weed was fine for me. Co- alcohol is the gateway to cocaine for sure. And um, I have never been a drinker ever. Yeah, you got to hang out at like bars for like five years, and then people start giving you cocaine. Yeah, mm. that's not a <laughs> welcome. To not the my club, thing. Buddy. Not my, yeah. not the path I wanted. I did weed yeah. and then hallucinogens for a period. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that and is no, literally there it. is there is pretty little overlap with those drugs and and cocaine for the most part. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Alcohol can and be the I gateway think. we know the gateway drug to heroin use is, is prescription. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, opioids. So yeah. where the fuck do they get off? Mm. Calling this a gateway drug still. I know. This is all just dumb 1940s shit. Is this from gateway drug, uh, yeah. per, per Bishop Allen, who talked to you yesterday, it's completely satire. agree with the <laughs> gateway drug to other drugs. Oh, Poisonings, it, it actually increases uh-huh. among teens. In Hot poisoning. Colorado, three <laughs> times as many teens ended up in the emergency room. They don't die from it, but they end up with rapid. No, yeah, you know, they're, 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 they're moderately anxiety, uncomfortable and you're against for a little this, while. And overall, the other, the other thing ah. that it's not on the... Co- it's like you were saying earlier, if don't make the health argument because if you really give a shit about people's health, there's so many other things that are way worse. You'd than be talking this, about you, diet you, all day, every day. Diet, yeah. cigarettes. Exercise. It would be about alcohol, right? Baking like, soda. You don't give a fuck about this, or so just stop. Stop yeah, pretending, it know? is it is disingenuous at its core. Just just shut up, you fucking fraud. <laughs> and this <laughs> isn't even you know we talked about that other um the chronic the the thing that people get when they chronically smoke weed for a long period of time and it's like a digestive problem and they get horrible shooting pains in their stomach, um, which was, was a new thing that started after weed had been legalized recreationally in Colorado. I swear to God, like, I never expected the country to go this way. I thought I knew it would probably get weird in one way or another, but, like, yeah. for, like, reefer madness stuff and fucking well, McCarthyism uh, is back. Like, what is happening? Thing, Race wars. Yeah. I'm skeptical <laughs> about that, um, about the stomach thing. Uh, but there, it is fairly well documented, and actually over a pretty long period of time. Oh yeah. Um, 
And uh, not that I'm 100% convinced about it, but like the timing of it is kind of suspect because once weed became more of a commercially produced processed product let me ask you this what do you and think was sold in a store then it became a thing that was making people sick what do you think uh is worse for your stomach weed or a room temperature whiskey every day for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> um, i eat a lot of weed do I you? mean, that's one of my primary ways of consuming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've heard uh, I've heard that it can be kind of an irritant to some people and stuff like that. You know? I don't know. I, I haven't either. But uh, I don't like eating it, though, because honestly, um, I, I don't know. It weirds me out how long the high takes to get there. And then and then you're like all of a sudden so fucking high. <laughs> like it's like three hours later. You're like, fine, you're fine, you're fine. And then all of a sudden it's just like. <laughs> like I'm pot know. poisoned. Yeah, and who knows what you're gonna want to be doing in three hours? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pot poisoned, and uh, and no, I'd way rather just smoke. Be like, I'm high right now. If I want to be high later, I'll smoke later. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I get the benefits when it because smoking is obviously an irritant, and that's not good for you either. So I don't right, know, and also it's more discreet, and it can be done in public without arousing suspicion. And you know, I I'm never in public for that long. No, right? and you don't have to like go to a job and stay there for many. Many many hours That's at a time. True. It's true. Um, without well, being able like to go a, outside or anything. Not like a place where I can't smoke weed. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are benefits, and I should actually not ever smoke weed because of my lungs, but I do. I thought it was good for your lungs. Yeah. Well, the Liar. smoking. No, it, vaporizing would be better. Because you have a, Andrea has asthma. Yeah, I think. And everybody knows that there's right a now. there's what an element uh, in in the marijuana smoke. There's that, a couple. There's a bronchodilator that. Um, Opens your airways. It basically does like what an inhaler would do, right? Yeah, and on top of that, it if you use an inhaler, the chemicals in the weed help the medicine work better and mm. actually insist the in, the prescription Assists. medication. Yeah, I believe you said insists. It insists on it insisting. Ins- <laughs> it insists that the medication act it. more efficiently. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, and actually, a lot of doctors will say that the carcinogenic effects of smoking are. Um, not as extreme as the benefits you get from smoking it, but no, preferably I shouldn't be doing it. That's why you vape. It's still that's an, why you, yeah, vaping would be fine or eating. It's still an irritant, no matter what you do. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, Card, so but it's edibles because they're unregulated. You don't know what you're eating. Oh, it comes in different types of food wow. stuff sometimes. Brian, that's where the poisonings are coming from. People are eating candy. They have it in <laughs> drinks. Wow, well, this looks great. There's no stop sign poisonings? on there. You know, there's pe- they, p- other pe- I've seen other people uh, point like to this, like the pe- people having panic attacks and being pot poisoned or turning them or, you know, showing up at hospitals all the time. And it's like, no, clawing their eyes out of their sockets. No, no, no. They're just <laughs> idiots that got too high. They got too high. Mm-hmm. Remember, we that cop that called the uh, 911 because he thought he was going to die when he ate too many edibles. No, no the guys who were teens. trafficking the weed. Oh, yeah. And called the cops on themselves <laughs> because oh, yeah. they got too high and got those paranoid. Are, those are call, my call your guys, guys off. Will you just just call your guys off. We did, yeah. <laughs> now that I have more experience about? with edibles, I'll bet they ate a shitload of edibles not realizing what they were going to do to them and then they got too high off of those. Just that right. makes and a lot more sense than smoking so much weed it gets you that high. Yeah, it would be hard to smoke that much unless yeah. you had never been high before right. or something. In which something. case, how are you trafficking that much marijuana? But yeah. Um, um, we should listen to that phone. Wasn't it wasn't the 911 call. It was 911 um, call. Just yeah. call, call the guys off. Just call yeah. them off. They thought everybody around them was an undercover cop. Yeah. Like, just, just get it over they with. They just pulled over because they just couldn't take it anymore. Those guys were fucking quit, awesome. Just quit playing games. Um, yeah, just, just we we've got had it. enough. We, we've we had get enough. It. <laughs> Wait, okay. Uh, is this it? Uh, this 20 looks like 911 call. High drug dealers made to turn themselves in. That's... If it's not what we're talking about, oh yeah, yeah, no, this it's is it. It's taking forever to load. Here we go. Um, inside edition. To smuggle marijuana across <laughs> state lines, accidentally turn themselves into authorities. Hi, uh, we're the two dumb <laughs> that got caught uh, trying to bring stuff through your border and all your. He's cops. just so casual. He's like, yeah, it's us. You yeah, know, we're, uh, we know. We're the know. morons, you guys are. Like a bunch of jack wagons. <laughs> <laughs> just driving around with like a bunch of jack wagons. I just really would like you guys to end it. If you guys, if you could help me out with that, you just like to get, get on with it. You got caught doing what? According to authorities, <laughs> Leland Ayala Dolia. They had just convinced themselves that everything was a cop around them. Yeah. Oh, that we've fuck. talked about that before, though. That w- with those weed goggles. 
that they had <laughs> that were like yeah. drunk goggles. Uh, yeah, a bunch of cops. How like accurate weed goggles would just turn every other car into a cop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this moron. <laughs> A bunch of jack wagons. And, uh, yeah, a bunch of your cops driving around a bunch of civilian cars just not no, wanting to pick us up. I don't know what, these... what the deal was. Just wondering if he could help us out and just end it. Okay. Um... Yeah. I mean, can they call one of them? I don't know. It's getting cold out here, man. I just want to get warm and just get on with this whole thing, so. Okay. Where, uh, where are you at right now? Do you guys have any, like, guns or weapons or anything on yeah, at all? We don't, have, we don't have any of that story with us. Okay, cool. Snack and stuff, so. <laughs> I just want to make sure that they're just, they're, they're just <laughs> curious. Yeah, yeah. We tried walking away from the car a couple of times, and I've been worried. We tried waving them down, and it didn't work, so I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, I do, have, I do have one of them. Do you have any idea how embarrassed? Like you never would live this town ever. <laughs> no, you're these guys had to move now. and yeah. change their names. Like, and they had a bunch of weed, if I remember right. It was like a couple like pounds, pounds or something. Yeah. yeah, I do have one of my marked units. He's on yeah, his way over this there. This dispatcher is one really my, uh, cool. Though. Units, he's on his way over there, so he said he'll, he's on his way to meet you. So, all right, thank you. <laughs> that is fucking gold. Okay, bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, damn. Twenty pounds. Whoa. What were these guys the doing? Who is this retarded? <laughs> I don't know where to get fucking 20 pounds of weed. No. Well, who is this retarded and is getting that enough money together? That's the other thing. I mean, depending on how bad you get ripped off, you, you could be paying 80 grand for that much weed, you know? Somebody like, pot poisoned them and tricked them into shit. doing this. Jesus Christ. Into, into muling this illegal substance. No, that would be way too much. I'm sorry. I was thinking more. What was it? 20 pounds? 20, 20 pounds. Yeah. Like, so, if you, so 40 grand maybe at, at tops probably. But like... Fuck, who has that much money to spend on weed and has those connections and can get it done and then and turn then, some fucking cells in <laughs> to normal people? Hey, yeah, they're waving we're, people down. We didn't oh, We didn't really want to do this. We got. We just want to end it, man. Yeah. This has been... It's too uh, stressful. Yeah. <laughs> These guys need to make a comeback. So they no. woke up. We should follow up on them. They went to sleep, first of all. Here's what happened. They, got, they went to jail. And the first thing they did is just lay down and go to sleep. And they woke up like... What? And then, and then it like sl it slowly came back to them. Like, did we fucking call the cops on ourselves? Yeah. What the fuck did we do? This is not right. What the oh, fuck God. did we do? I, can you imagine the mind fuck of that? Like when you wake up, like because you do stupid shit sometimes when you're drunk and you feel weird the next day, nor like nervous. You know, you're like, oh god, I, yeah. yeah. But this, this is, is like like exceptionally stupid. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I feel like there's no way that this was their purchase, and somebody was waiting for this. I and mean, just paid them as mules. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's what I would have said. There's no but way that somebody who could make They're this about purchase. as dumb as a couple of mules, I'll tell you that much. Uh, that's the point I'm getting at exactly. <laughs> I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, it was dramatic. <laughs> um, <laughs> For all you listeners I'll at all. I'll try to signal to you next time. Okay. Um, keep it. Let's move right along here, okay? All right. Uh, who the fuck is this Logan yeah, Paul guy? God, Why is he's a talking? waste of my life. He, he did a video in the Japanese suicide forest. Which, if anyone doesn't know, it's a forest where people commit suicide. Just um, like just all, all the time. All the time. Yeah, yeah like that's just it. where you go to do it. Fucking beautiful culture that they have over there. So yeah, weird. it's tradition. Nothing you know how weird important ever tradition happens is to there. Them. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking sacred. <laughs> it's uh, the suicide forest, and they actually have uh, who did it? Who did Vice do it years ago? Uh, there was a real popular documentary about it years Probably, ago. Probably that sounds right. And they they went out there and they had people that are just always like what they're like counselors that are just always walking around trying to spot because I guess there's normal hikers and stuff too, but. They just are constantly looking for people, like on the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, how they'll send someone out, like, "Hey, you feeling okay, buddy? <laughs> you yeah, know? doing all right? What? I don't know. I don't know why anyone would go hiking there. I mean, people are just constantly killing themselves. Why would you do that? Like, I'm just, I'm just going out hiking with my arsenic and rope, like, yeah. like normal. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> totally casual. Um, Logan Paul posts footage of a parent suicide victim on YouTube. Everybody got pissed off. <clears throat> the video's gone. We I didn't really want to fucking search. I'm sure you can find it out there somewhere. Probably, um, yeah. But uh, it's it's a video that apparently they showed a guy 
hung in the forest from a tree tree. and apparently they sort of made light of it It, from what i saw they were just sort of didn't know how to act it was like oh jesus and they were sort of kind of laughing more out of nervousness it seemed like Mm -hmm. yeah you know i honestly i don't know some people are never going to react well to that i could see they look young i could see if i that if we stumbled upon a body with me and my friends probably at first you're like oh my god what the fuck and then you're standing there 15 minutes eventually somebody's gonna start joking around right it's going Um, to happen it's gonna happen to relieve the tension things yeah yeah um but also then would you like take the video of that and put it on YouTube so 15 million people would watch you making yeah. jokes about a dead body? Mm, I don't know if I would, but I also, who gives a shit if somebody does? I mean, here's the other thing. Like, they're everybody, everybody, oh, this should be banned and blah. Like, unsubscribe from his channel. I don't care. Yeah, totally. This, guy, this guy's... Oh, Well, another problem with this guy, though, is that he makes videos geared towards a much younger audience. Uh-huh. Um, and I think people were uh, concerned about the children who were going to click on it, not expecting to see a dead body and then see First one. of all, what is this guy? What does he do? Uh, he's a YouTuber. He does stuff on YouTube. That's his career. That's, That's what he does. But he makes uh, we a we tried thing. to watch a couple of his videos and they weren't about anything. No, they just were like him walking around, kind of just randomly talking about different shit, and, and then like really, really, really attention span, uh, anti attention span right. shit. Just like yeah. two seconds of this, blah, 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 which to, is you know. what makes him popular with kids because they're like blah, blah, blah. they're Here's used a, to it from TV. Yeah, that's you know, fucking whippersnappers. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little bit of this uh, um, video, I, really I guess. Need to say this. I don't know if he's I fucking think around here. Right there. Oh, Excuse me. Gosh, and... <laughs> oh, this, is the, this is the thing. This, this, is this makes me wonder if the whole thing was a prank. Has it come out yet? If it was a prank or not? He had horrible, There's horrible no backlash as a result of this, and I think he yeah. would have admitted it was a prank immediately. It sort of comes across like a prank here. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What the fuck? Then this part looks genuine because there's like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and like a guy Stop comes one. to like this extract the, the body. And... Yeah. I ain't gonna be sober for this sh- I'm gonna drink this Japanese. See, so yeah, this guy's annoying. Yeah, yeah, he's really annoying. See, they um, he. How, they, how old is he to be wearing a fucking hat like that? <sighs> he's too, too old. To be, <laughs> he's just. It's, cranky it's like, but it, you know what? He probably started this career <laughs> that he has unicorn, now. A uh, costume on last show, I think. Yeah, that's fine. New Year's Eve, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he probably started his career six or seven years ago and has the same age range that he's aiming at. Yeah. And when he was 16, it wasn't weird, but now that he's 23, it's creepy. He got super famous, so if it's not broke, don't fix it. He just kept right, doing the yeah. same thing. Yeah, I don't know. He I, keeps I, getting older, and they stay the same age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. wonder if this guy actually put the body in his video. Be a lot cooler if he did. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. He has a big enough following that Let's this was like. Oops. Just your um, Sorry. Go ahead. Big news. A lot of people cared about it. Um, I yeah. think the biggest concern. I saw a lot of stuff regarding. Especially YouTube's like suggestion algorithms and how there's a tendency for the algorithms for some reason to take like a video geared towards a child and then suggest something that's like really weird and fucked up <sighs> yeah, after yeah. it. Well, how are you um, in the end getting? I mean, dude, that's an old. We know. Better no, you're than not. And the people who are mad are the people who uh, <laughs> want their children to use the internet unsupervised and expect that they're not going to fucking look up decapitation videos. So yeah, I would think that a lot of kids. Whose responsibility is it? Which yeah. you shouldn't do, by the way. Right. <laughs> and it's also, why are you listening to this show? It's traumatizing. <laughs> Unless you've got a private place to go masturbate. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you don't want to be walking around with a boner all fucking day after watching a decapitation video. You know what I mean? <clears throat> it seemed like the, the reaction was mostly based on the fact that they want YouTube to censor people and censor stuff like this from uh, appearing in front of children. And that's not really good or realistic or possible. Yeah. yeah. They even YouTube developed a kid's app where it's supposed to be specifically only videos for kids. And well, no, haven't that you seen really Haven't up. you seen if you, uh, when you make your account, you just have to tell it what age you are. So, you know, there's no way you could, how do you get through that kind of, uh, security, uh, uh, firewall? You know, you, you need to, uh, 
one one of the greatest things that I loved about YouTube when I first was on it, I thought that was hilarious. Like, it's like, are you 18? This video is like fucking really graphic. Just are you 18? And it's like, yes. yeah. And then they switched it to where your account has to say you're 18. Yeah. But yeah. It Which to, would be impossible to It change. used to just be like, yep. <laughs> That's sure not, am. Why even have that? Yeah. Um. All right. Let's look at this. City tells man to stop sheltering the homeless from the cold or they'll take his house. This the is homeless guy, will? Uh, oh, yeah. That was... <laughs> we're just warning you, buddy. Take it over. <laughs> you shouldn't trust them. Look, you're so outnumbered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, is this in Chicago or Elgin? I thought it was in Elgin. I don't know. Um really? Whatever it is. Uh, this guy, uh, Greg Schiller, he did an amazing thing. Uh, he opened up his empty basement to a group of homeless people who may have otherwise died sleeping out on the street. I guess some of the local shelters only open up, like some of the emergency homeless shelters only open up when it's 15 degrees or colder, which is fucked up. Why is that the line? Right. Like, if you're going to help people, help them, you know? How about... How well, about, you how could about the, survive a 20 degree night. How about the freezing temperature of water? How about that? Yeah. Since that's what we are that's mostly. A good indication. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so anyways, this guy is letting homeless people stay, uh, giving them food, warm beverages, cots to sleep on. I guess he used to do it in his garage and uh, it, uh, it was still so, too cold and not enough room and whatever. So he opened up his basement, doing a nice thing. Probably doesn't even cost much, you know. Probably something a lot of people could do if they were better people, uh, you know. But uh, we should do that here in our apartment building. <laughs> Just oh, fucking yeah. fill the basement with homeless people. Yeah, that's like, a, by that basement is warm. It wasn't us. Um, I would stay up all night with them and give them coffee and stuff and feed them. He said, what's more, Schiller had a strict policy that no drugs or alcohol were allowed in his home. I'm sure no one ever abused that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is Schiller's second year of inviting the area's homeless into his home. Uh, last year, however, he let them sleep in his... Ah, I already talked about that, blah, blah, blah. So the city says... Um, here, Here is a spokesperson who Molly Center, I think, is saying this, yeah. Uh, While we appreciate those who volunteer to provide additional resources in the community, Mr. Schiller's house does not comply with codes and regulations that guard against potential dangers, such as carbon monoxide poisoning, <laughs> inadequate light and ventilation, and insufficient exits in the event of a fire. And then added later, you know what's safer? Sleeping with a bunch of other bums on the railroad tracks. <laughs> That's where we'd rather have them. Um, she didn't Freezing say that last to part. fucking death. I made yeah. that up. As city spokesperson Molly Sunner said in a statement, if the homeless population is being forced, as if the homeless population is being forced to stay in this basement. Right. What a fucking, re- just, how do you, I mean, carbon monoxide poisoning? Yeah. <laughs> That's the, what you're coming up with here? Yeah. Um, well, with that many people in the house, who knows? Oh, no. Someone that, might knock the carbon monoxide detector out of the wall and then you'll all be dead. And and they might tamper with the carbon monoxide pipes. Yeah. <laughs> start shooting That's carbon a common monoxide. problem when you bring the homeless inside. Right. Which, of course, is an anti-theft measure most homes yeah. have. Just pipes that spew carbon monoxide <laughs> if a wire is tripped. Um, <laughs> inadequate light and ventilation? God damn it. it. These people are yeah. fucking evil, dude. Yeah. Once they found out that a good Samaritan would dare challenge their almighty dictate on sleeping regulations, the city sent in police and a warrant and told them to shut it down or else. By the way, this is the Free Thought Project where we get a lot of articles. Yeah. Uh, they shut me down and said I have 24 hours to return my basement to storage and uh, take down the cots and sleeping bags for everybody or they'll con- condemn the house, said Schiller. Whoa. Wow. Uh, let's see. It's- what else about this? Uh if uh, yeah, when confronted about the situation, <laughs> that same lady issued a statement doubling down on Schiller's 24-hour notice, adding, "If not, the city will take additional enforcement action to compel the removal of unlawful ba- of the unlawful basement sleeping area." So you know, he just has to repurpose the, like, what if he just wants the cots there? What anyway? if he lets them sleep upstairs? I don't understand how the city could have any say in this whatsoever well and like can you what if you had a party of like your friends like and i put out a bunch of cots everybody's drinking they're all gonna sleep down here Mm -hmm. you know what i mean well why would you not see the problem is he probably was too transparent he probably was like too honest 
You he know posted what I mean? about it on Facebook. Yeah, he was probably too honest. If he had just somehow gotten around legally, like, no, I know all of these guys. These are all my friends. We're having a party in my basement. What are you talking about, man? Yeah. I mean, obviously, it would be obvious you were lying. I go but... camping. I have a lot of cots. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And I just love guys that smell like oil and piss. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like fucking, it. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, but no, Are he was probably me? he was probably too. Uh, he probably violated the you know. Oh, uh, you're running a shelter now. It's not a party, right? You yeah, know? and um, you're not paying us. I doubt legally, the neighbors probably called actually, and they're like, he's being all snooty and sitting on his high horse, <laughs> like Ooh, yeah. the homeless people. He's got to be breaking some get codes, right? It. I mean, get this guy the fuck out of my I neighborhood. I donate to the Salvation Army. I don't need to be shamed. <laughs> yeah. Here's um, what I don't understand. So the city doesn't want homeless people. They don't want homeless people to go inside of someone's house. They don't want to offer them a shelter. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do anything to help them not be homeless anymore. Yeah. So what do they want? I don't know. (laughs) They (laughs) prefer they die in the cold (laughs) over the carbon monoxide or insufficient lighting. Well, like, (laughs) yeah, you know, why? Why? I doubt there's any law against inviting a homeless person to your house just because you like them. Right. Uh, like I don't know about. I that. don't know. It seems like there would be ways for this guy to get around this. Yeah, I don't know. just like yeah. specific invitations here. Uh, what if he's just a big pushover and does what whatever anybody tells him? And this whole thing started with one pushy homeless guy. Like, hey man, let me sleep in that garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I don't. I'm really not sure about that, sir. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, he's just got like twenty fucking homeless dudes being like, hey. Hey, the, soup is, the soup is cold. <laughs> <laughs> and then the police catch wind. Y'all got they, cider. The neighbors call the police and the police catch wind of it. And they're like, you're in big trouble. Like, I was like, oh, I didn't know. I'm oh, sorry. Gil. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm usually on these cots. <laughs> oh, my God. Um. Chiller says it's cold enough to freeze to death because he's one of the smartest scientists in the world. That's how he knows that. Yeah. Um, sadly, because Schiller knows that if he opens up his home to those in need again, he will be cited and possibly lose his house. How can they do this? How exactly will this inhumane ordinance affect those who are finding shelter at Schiller's home? Well, according to Schiller, somebody's going to die. He's probably right. He's going to murder someone. He's I think that's fucking... a threat. <laughs> okay, you won't let me shelter homeless guys. Might I'll as well just murder him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, he just becomes a serial killer. Yeah. Um, Is this what you wanted? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's like the end of falling down. He's like, I'm I'm the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> then he shoots Robert Duvall with a squirt gun. <laughs> um <laughs> What else we got here? Uh da, 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 ba, da, bum, bum, bum. not much else, huh? We did we do it all? Um, oh Holy no, shit. uh Uber and Toyota oh, yeah. have teamed up to I invent one, a so brand it's... new thing. I, it's in the. That's okay. Oh, that's right. Toyota invented buses again, huh? Well, that... yeah, well, no. I mean, not really. That's what I thought. It Innovented. Is is they what? They innovated buses. Mm. Ride share nice. vehicle for multiple groups of people. Let me ask you this: that follows is a it, designated route is it on a schedule. <laughs> is it longer than it is wide? And you don't really get to choose where you're going. That's an inappropriate question, Vinny. Sorry. It is longer than it is wide. Mm-hmm. That's an inappropriate statement. And it yeah. is. So it's like a long car that goes on a certain route and makes scheduled stops. Along the way, right for for people and to use together. You don't even you don't necessarily know. know the people, right? Is this yeah. some yeah. kind of social media thing? It's, it's a, just yeah, going it's way new. over my head. I'm not really sure. Is, is this a, what a blockchain is? Is it? No, it's um. I, the, don't know. I mean, the main selling point obviously is uh, not that it's just a bus. It's that uh, it's driverless. Um, but that sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it really just sits in one spot. Um, it's actually bouncing off of an idea that Toyota, uh, a partnership that Toyota has with Pizza Hut, where they have developed and are going to start using driverless pizza delivery vehicles. How um, does it work if you don't install the drivers? Hmm? Computer joke. Uh, <laughs> Wrong it's, crowd. Yeah, it's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's driverless. Gotcha. <laughs> Gotcha. Was that your Norm McDonald? Yeah, well, that was my Vinny being Norm McDonald. <laughs> it just gets yeah, more well, diluted. You know. yeah. <laughs> um, so, there. so anyway, yeah, so Uber and um, Toyota now are trying to use the same vehicle and call it a not a bus. 
Right. Ride chair vehicle. Uber ride chair vehicle. Ride chair. It's, like a, it's just it like, a, like long, a toaster with wheels. <laughs> it's like a tall limo yeah. <laughs> with a lot of seats. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. And it, no driver. It follows a designated route. I don't know what the specifics are. I mean, about we're joking it, around a little yeah. bit about it, the oh. fact that it's basically a bus. It's, yeah, it's just a bus. I know. That one, pr- old privileged David Box over here never had to ride the bus, I guess. Don't even I know ride the, <laughs> rode the, bi- the bus for. How long a long was that? time, like yeah. a, a year. Did you? Yeah, it was part of his commute. I rode yeah. a bus to a train. Wow! And then Whoa. a train home and bus back. And a train is just like a bunch of buses connected to to each other. You know, mm-hmm. that's all that is. Um, um, God, the bus was fucking horrible. Yeah, they, uh, I hate the bus. <laughs> they plan on unveiling all the do- the, uh, the details and uh, and the actual vehicle at the Tokyo Olympic Games in 2020. So, we're- oh, do we? Is this what we need? Driverless cars? Is there not other problems to solve? Like, why is this it's a spooky? I don't, one I don't to feel like, on. like it's the, the shit thing. roads. It, it's just one of those um, knowledge for knowledge's sake like why are they developing humanoid robots why are they doing it why are they devoting so much time and energy and money to it why and those fucking creepy dogs that run around those Those things are creepy i saw a stripper robot today that was designed to mimic uh the movements of a stripper on a pole and how what what did they get it closer it well it's weird because they build these things without heads and it also didn't have a it was just like a regular (laughs) Robot body. Finally, with a like woman that a can't talk back. You know what I mean, David Box? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like waggling its hips around a pole. Yeah, there it is. Is this one? Yeah. Uh, why? Uh, I don't know. This is what I'm talking about. Why? Well, strippers do call That was a robot? I think. Oh, yeah, they've really come so along. Like, oh my God, why'd they make a crack horror <laughs> 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 What is this? I don't know. This isn't it, though. This oh none of these. God. There it is. Oh, <laughs> that's the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. It's wearing high heels. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it is. How weird! This has to also be Japan, right? There's it's no just way this. Came. I have no idea where this came There's from. There's no way it came from anywhere other than no. Japan. No. Who guarantee the fuck it. else is gonna do this? Nobody. Well, maybe China. No, I don't think so. They're too, up, they're too uptight. They are a little more, uh, yeah, they're, they're a little more yeah, stiff. Um, yeah. Except when it comes to dogs. Also, if you start breathing heavy, you just keel They canceled over. that dog festival. They did? They don't do it anymore. <laughs> as of this year. Turns out uh, Facebook, Facebook got wind <laughs> yeah. of this and, and this our fun is over. No more yeah. boiling live dogs. Oh, God. savages. Jesus Christ. Um, but I think that if they're going to debut this robot car at the Tokyo, I think the Tokyo Olympics are going to be a fun thing to watch. You think so? Remember, the prime minister of Japan appeared dressed as Super Mario to announce that they had <laughs> won the bid for the Olympics for that. That was like how he celebrated was by dressing up like Super Mario. So <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Like I, I just I think that it's gonna be fun. I yeah. Well, <laughs> Nintendo is from Japan, yeah, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. I, I wonder if if that's like a huge source of national pride. There is is Nintendo. What, do you know that or? It, it must be. They um when they first here. Let me see if I can pull it up. When they first uh, released all their designs for like their Olympic merchandise and everything. Yeah. All of their mascots are cartoon characters they have a, a pokemon is one of them they have mario characters that is like mostly what they've exported culturally i guess yeah uh um, yeah i mostly i mean it's there's probably been, there's been some japanese music that's influenced things and stuff a little bit but yeah. um it's yeah i mean at least in america it's been uh mostly cartoons right cartoons video games what else do you know sushi um sushi yeah what else comes from Japan, David Box? Uh, oh, I, I wanted to ask you this earlier while Andrew is finding that. Remember our game called David Box? David Box doesn't know black people. Uh, <laughs> David Box has like a blind spot when it comes to culture. He knows nothing about black people. I just wanted to see if you knew what is the name of the black guy in the Rat Pack. No idea. <laughs> 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 
it. <laughs> I knew no. it. I don't. Yeah. I can't name anybody in the rap. Pack. Oh yes, you can. Is it Frank That's a white Sinatra? People thing. Yeah. yeah, you should. Know I know this. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. End of list. No, come on. I don't know. He Who hosted. Is the he used only to... other name that you might know. <laughs> yeah, a crooner from then. Hung out with Frank Sinatra a lot. He used, Sorry, he used to host. He used to host. <laughs> he used to host roasts sometimes. I don't know what that is. Really, the yeah. Dean Martin roast. Is it Dean Martin? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, all right. I was really hoping I'm, you would. Maybe know- I'm just uncultured. I was just really in hoping general. you would know the two white guys' names and not the black guy. Oh, that would be. Does funny. this ring a bell? Sammy Davis Jr. No. That doesn't ring a bell. No, not really. Wow. That's, yeah, that's... Sorry, I hmm. mean, I never knew the Rat Pack or took an interest in them. Let me ask you I this. I saw pictures hanging on the wall. Who invented peanut butter? Uh, was that George Washington Carver? That's the first one he's gotten ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. yeah. Well, that's history, though. That's, <laughs> that's history, peanut, yeah. peanut that, butter has That guy revolutionized agriculture. Yeah. Great. Did you know that... When, remember that robot we had called it 2XL? It was a toy. Wait, we should watch a 2XL commercial, actually, but it's really funny. Um, remember that toy? Had we had? A, yeah, you put a cassette tape in him. Yeah, it was. And then a, he but would it was answer questions. It, it was, it was uh, like a choose your own adventure cassette tape. Yeah, what was the commercial that was on when we were kids? Because I guess these are some that are older. Uh, probably this one. Let's see. Um, this was two XL. <laughs> that kid's clever. Let's get the fucking. Let's get the cassette tape robot from the fucking NSA headquarters. Yeah. <laughs> And the guard is actually just a dog and went chasing after a ball. <laughs> it was like an interactive cassette tape. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it had like a trivia game. <laughs> like, oh, is that what's in this room? Is this one of those sex robots? guarding? <laughs> You kids are cool after all. <laughs> um, but yeah, the 2XL, we had that and it would had a question about uh, no, it would give you like random facts in between some of the questions, and it would go, "Did you know that the peanut is neither a pea nor a nut? It is a legume." <laughs> <laughs> it talked all funny and had that like really like over the top like theatrical like. <laughs> it would laugh. <laughs> is there one where it talks? Hold on. <laughs> Meet 2XL. He asks two questions. Which has a better sense of smell, a moth or a dog? A dog does not. Let's see. A moth can smell another moth six miles away. 2XL goes to where do six horses go? <laughs> to a horse patrol. 2XL's full of fun <laughs> jokes facts about animals, sports, dinosaurs, and monsters. What that famous laugh. monster attacked Japan? Godzilla. You are right. With 2XL and tons of program tapes, the fun never ends. Did you know adult brains shrink after age 13? Ha 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 ha! We'll never Smart get old. Robot, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're kids in the nineties, anyways. Yeah. Um, okay, that was two XL. Um, I found the. They're actually the cultural ambassadors for Japan's Olympics. Oh, really? And they're all animated. And you sent it Do you, Can you? Yeah, I sent it. I sent you. Uh, I see yeah. Sailor Moon. Okay. I don't know if that's the character's name, but yeah, it's I think from that one Sailor is Sailor Moon. Moon yeah, uh, I see Goku from Dragon Ball Z and Astro Boy. Is that who that is? I don't. I know. don't know. I'm hoping maybe this is the guy that us, couldn't but... identify Steve Urkel from <laughs> <Yeah>. before. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recognize any of these other people. Yeah. Yeah, like who is this? I, I don't know. No idea. But they're very Japan. Black Eye from Mortal Kombat. Uh, with the metal arms. That's mm-hmm. Jax. Okay. Yeah. What right. about the other black guy from Mortal Kombat? Uh, was there another guy? With the disco suit. Who? What? Mortal Kombat Deception. No. I don't yeah. think I know that one either. I only know classic characters. Oh. Yeah. Mortal Kombat 3 Gold, and that's the, that's my limit. Is this, is this what you want? <laughs> is this what you want me to play? Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is, but yeah. <laughs> I do. I already like you, it. This is what you just sent me. What were you sending me? The article in the photo but this is good most popular animated celebrities Jiminy what the hell is that I don't know I know none of these no what the fuck okay jo- what no, Goku uh, yeah. that's no Luffy? idea obviously Naruto. Naruto I recognize you have that Naruto hat I do yeah I'm a Naruto hat yeah. an Astro Boy yeah somebody right. left it 
at the restaurant where I work and you took it home with I you. I didn't know what that's what that was. <laughs> so I just recognized the symbol on that guy's headband. Oh, okay. Where is that thing? Luffy? That's the... Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do have that on a hat. I've never worn it. Dork. I didn't know that's what that was. What's up, my hat? Petty Cure. What is that? For me, it was Led Zeppelin. Threw all my petty records right out the window. <laughs> back... <laughs> Back in high school, you know. Okay. Um, Sailor Moon. Shin Chan, Astro Boy. Why is Astro Boy dressed like that? I don't know. How is he usually dressed? I don't know. With more clothes. Wait, where is he? <laughs> what the hell is that? So gay. It's a pretty gay cartoon. It's just, so just oh, and he has. He looks eyelashes. like the what's the Betty uh, Boop? Yeah, Betty Boop. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. What is that? Is that the best you could fucking draw something? What is that thing <laughs> supposed to be? Was that the Shinjan? Is that Shin-jan. what that thing is? Shin-jan. Who would watch something that looked like that? That's the worst drawing I've ever seen. Let's see. Oh, and he his explanation comes with no context. See, like they're saying Luffy from One Piece, Goku from Dragon Ball Z, but he's just listed as Shinchan. Well, Shinchan fucking sucks. Who drew that fucking thing, dude? <laughs> he might actually be my favorite. Very, Look very at that. bad, yeah. And I'm, I like 12-ounce mouse. Yeah. <laughs> and I hate this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Olympic Channel. Share, oh, comment, boy. like, no, I'll do none of those things. Thank you. Ah, Norm ah, MacDonald. <laughs> he's everywhere. Um, he's in all my suggestions, yeah. So, anyway, I think it's pretty cool that their cultural ambassadors are all cartoon characters. That's something that would never happen in this country. Well, I'm sure they realize that they're more recognizable than like actual anybody. Japanese celebrities, yeah. probably, you know? Yeah. Of course, right? Totally. Yeah. Well, probably for some people, we didn't know who very many of them were. Yeah. But, uh, but, I, but you know what? I'm always surprised how many people are into that shit that yeah. I know that I'll, like, make fun of it. And they're like, well, do you know, like, a uh, fucking... Whatever you know, yeah. I don't. I can't even. Know, I, I, there's so many. What's that uh, one? Akira. Yeah, or uh, there's one that everybody. Oh, remember. I know. I, everyone says they don't like anime, but just watch this one thing. Yeah, there's always one that they're telling you like. I don't dude, like it. anime, but Akira is a good graphic novel. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't like anime. <laughs> <laughs> it is. What? It is a good one. I know this is a dumb question. From what I remember, what is a graphic novel again? Comic book. It's, yeah, it's no, just, if you it's pe- a long comic book. It's, it's not an, the same thing, is it? Yeah, the, it's like an it, anime comic book. Yeah, well, no, that's or no, manga. A, no, a graphic novel is like a whole, like a it's whole like a long narrative form. that could be written as a novel, but it's written in comic book form. Okay, right. It's not an episode; it's a movie. Why didn't they write a novel if they could write a novel? See, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. See, um. All right, what do you guys think, David Box? You got to go to Betty Buy. Yeah. What time you got to be on the train Bird tomorrow? Bar. Uh, I think five fifty six is the train. Oh A.M. A.M. What yeah. time are you taking or setting your alarm for? Uh, let's see, probably five fifteen. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Shower tonight. I already showered. I already did. You can set up the coffee maker. Ahead it's of time already set with the timer. <laughs> he yeah. has a song that he sings about all the things he has to do to get I ready. I got my lunch <laughs> all packed. <laughs> That's really uh, Wait, hold much on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's hear this song for, Before we get out of here Wait, What is the song? It's, <laughs> Andrea you sing it He's too embarrassed uh, It's kind of rambling And inconsistent But basically it goes I got my lunch all packed I got my shoes tied tight Got my clothes laid out Got my backpack packed got my <laughs> It was just an irritating Hokey pokey That never gets to the hook Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's pretty just, It's And listing all the things from uh, Billy Madison And the original version Oh okay Yeah I don't remember that Back to school Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Alright Let's get out of here Alright Goodbye As uh, the band Tub Geometry Plays in the background here Check them out um, no. See you next time on the overdose. See ya. That's the best event. Till then. Well, then this one's for you. Be kind to each other. And look. Wait, every time I hear this song, I'm like, I'm black, black, and black, I'm black, black. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I do believe our obsession with celebrities in, in this country is out of control. Why I just heard they're thinking of <laughs> they're thinking of electing Oprah president. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, did you guys see that by the way? My yeah. God, people, is there no end to the narcissism and 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 the, and the delusion in this country? Denial, deceit, and delusion. You um, sound racist. I meant that. I meant to as a joke. Anyways, you know, be good to each other, and uh, and let's do things right in 2018. <laughs>